Hello, dear audiences. Welcome to the ninth edition of our in Hello, dear audiences. Welcome to the ninth edition of our international webinar series of Ankara University. Today, we are also hosting uh, one of our valuable partners, and this time uh, we are going to Japan. And the professors and the students of our uh, partner university, Niigata University from Japan, is our uh, webinar uh, guest today, and we will discuss and learn about the situation in Japan and their reaction uh, against COVID-19 pandemic at country level, city level, and in particular at the university level. So uh, before we start, I also would like to introduce our co-host uh, from our university, Professor Ozjan Trugai from our Faculty of Agriculture. Welcome. Hi, good morning. And good afternoon as well. <laughs> and good afternoon, yes. And uh, he's one of our coordinators at the Global Edge 2020 project, where we uh, cooperate with Niigata University and together with other uh, partners. So we will co-chair this session today together. And uh, I also would like to introduce you our guest speakers uh, very shortly. Uh, Professor Naoki Harada, is Vice Dean of Faculty of Agriculture from Niigata University, and he is Global Age 2020 Coordinator, and his specialty is Soil Science. And Assistant Professor Rashid Asidolu, Faculty of Agriculture, and his specialty is Soil Microbiology. He is also the Coordinator of Global Age 2020. And Ms. Tomoka Miyakawa, He's, she is from Faculty of Agriculture of Niigata University and one of the coordinators of our project. And we have our PhD students together with us today uh, from Graduate School of so Science and Technology. We have Mr. Solomon Oloruntobe somewhere and Ms. Guliz Doan and Mr. Kazusa Aoyagi. He's a master's student also from Graduate School of Science and Technology of Niigata University. So I would like to welcome you once again to our webinar and thank you very much for accepting our invitation to uh, join this session. Uh, so maybe today we can start uh, with a general uh, view of this pandemic uh, at your university and in Japan, briefly. Maybe Mr. Naoki Harada can share his thoughts with us, and then we can continue with the other participants. So, uh, Professor Harada, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the nice introduction. So, uh, first, uh, uh, I'd like to talk about the general issues uh, regarding the COVID-19 uh, infections in Japan. And then uh, Tomoko san, uh, Tomoko Miyakawa san uh, will uh, explain the countermeasures in our university. And finally, uh, Rashid sensei uh, will uh, present uh, the situation, uh, talk about uh, student status uh, with a table talk uh, with our student. Okay. So uh, first, I'd like to uh, explain, okay. Can you see my slide? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, for your kind introduction. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to have this opportunity 
to talk about the COVID-19 in Japan. Niigata University, uh, sorry, uh, Niigata University and the Ankara University have a long history for friendship. And thanks to the friendship, uh, we could operate a student exchange program between Japan and Turkey, so-called local age 2020, and uh, the financial support of the Japan, Japanese government. Uh, this is uh, explained by the ONU. Uh, we, uh, we were uh, going to start post global age programs from this spring, but it was stagnated due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That is today's topic. My specialty is soil science, so the field is uh, very far from this pandemic, but uh, I will do my best. First, let's check the fact in the world. This map is taken from the WHO website. The circle, the circle size indicate the number of cases in each country. COVID-19 has invaded almost all countries and regions in the world. According to WHO's statistics, the number of cases is about 7 million, which include more than 400,000 death cases. The next slide shows the time course of number of new cases counted by WHO. Color birds mean regions. In WHO statistics, Turkey belongs to Europe and Japan belongs to Western Pacific. Okay, the COVID-19 disease uh, began in China and soon spread to Europe. And uh, today the number of cases in this region shows decreasing trend. And instead, uh, uh, number of the patient uh, increasing in the in the other regions, especially North and uh, South America. Next, uh, I'd like to explain the current situation in Japan. Please look look at this map showing the Japanese islands with the number of cases in each prefecture. As you can find easily. There are many cases in Tokyo and the surrounding areas. In Osaka and Sapporo, especially uh, Hokkaido and Sapporo City, and many cases are also found. The total infected cases are about 17,000, 17, including more than 9,900 9, death cases. Our university is located in Niigata. The number of cases are much lower than the metropolitan areas as shown this table. The number of cases in each prefectures in Japan is clearly related to the population density. Unlike the metro metropolitan areas, such as Tokyo and Osaka, Niigata is a medium-sized rural city. This seems to give better results here. Now, oh, let's briefly compare the situation in some countries. This shows changes in the number of the cases per million population. We see the numbers. The numbers in Japan, South Korea, and China are less than one-tenth of those in European countries and the United States. We still don't know what causes these differences, but it may give a key factor 
to overcome COVID-19 infections in future. Here, uh, I'd like to introduce the time event of COVID-19 infections in Japan. WHO received a report about uh, unexplained pneumonia from China at the end of 2019. And they discovered a new coronavirus, so-called COVID-19, and announced a state of emergency around the world. In Japan, on January 6, the government alerted the outbreak of the new pneumonia in Wuhan, China. The first patient was found, on, found in Japan on January 16, and the first death case was reported on February 13. In the meantime, the luxury cruise ship carrying the patient arrived at the Yokohama port. In the ship, a massive cluster infection occurred and the government worked for controlling the disease expansion. The government then announced countermeasures against the disease. This year's Tokyo Olympic Games were also postponed. However, the number of cases continued to increase. In April, the government declared a state of emergency. Finally, the number of new cases has decreased and we are coming to the end of the fight, hopefully. This slide presents some of the governmental countermeasures against COVID-19 infection. First of all, it is important to find and isolate the infected persons. In Japan, government have focused on cluster infections. They, uh, cluster infections occurred in live houses, nightclubs, sport gyms, medical facilities, welfare, uh, welfare facilities, and so on. The government identified such patient clusters and checked infections of the persons in the facilities. Even if the results were negative by the PCR, the government asked them to stay home at least for two weeks. The government released the information, such information to the public. The government has presented infection pre uh, prevention measures to the public. They include avoid three sheets campaign, self restraint request, restrictions on forwarding events and using public facilities, shift to telework for the workers, school closures and border control. These measures seem to be effective, to, uh, effective in reducing the number of patients. On the other hand, the economy in Japan has been severely damaged. In the uh, fourth quarter of last year, the real GDP growth rate was significantly reduced due to the tax increase. This is the politics by the government. After that, we had hoped for the recovery, but the COVID-19 pandemic led to negative growth again. The negative growth is expected to continue for a long time. Personal consumption also fluctuated significantly. People, uh, people followed stay home policy requested by the government. People stopped traveling, 
watching movies in the theaters, eating out in the restaurant, shopping in the street, cutting hairs in the salons, etc. Instead, people are, uh, and uh, in addition, people were afraid to go to doctor or hospital. At the same time, uh, consumption of utilities, household food materials, computer for telework, and medical supplies and uh, hand wash soap increased. Okay, let's talk about the impact on agriculture in Japan. I'm a member of a faculty of agriculture. Due to their uh, governmental countermeasures against COVID-19, many parties, including wedding, were canceled or held on smaller scale. Restaurants and bars have been forced to close. School lunches are stopped. The expected inbound spending by the Korean and Chinese tourists has disappeared. Eating at home has increased. As a result, the consumption of flowers, premium foodstuffs, milk and dairy products fell down and the demand for general food products increased. International logistics have been stagnated and agricultural imports and exports have decreased. Falling technical in chance in agriculture. Their seasonal workers in other words are no longer allowed to enter the country. Labor power shortage in agriculture are becoming an urgent matter to be solved. So now we are facing uh, several questions for future agriculture in Japan. Will supply and demand return? Can we rely on falling agricultural products? Will overseas market recover? Should we establish more sustainable and domestic agriculture system? We have to think the answer for such questions. Now, this is the last slide. Various impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic are expected. It will remain for a long time. We need to keep up with the changes. We need to be flexible with the changes. And we need to think there are seeds for innovation. As I was, tough times bring opportunity. And of course, we need to prepare the second, even third wave of COVID-19 attack. Thank you very much for listening. I'd like to close my presentation. Thank you very much, Professor Harada. Uh, of course, we will receive some questions, but uh, I would like to leave the questions to the end. And first, we can continue with the other presentations, and then uh, we will conclude with the questions, and we will give floor to you once again. So thank you. And now we will continue with Ms. Miyakawa, uh, and we will learn about the situation at the university level. So Ms. Miyakawa, the floor is yours. Miyakawa-san, uh, please yes, withdraw your now, microphone. Please, yes. yes, now it's okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Merhaba. Uh, my name is Tomoko Miyakawa. And uh, today I'd like to talk about the uh, COVID-19 infection control at Niigata University. Let me share my presentation file. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, yeah it's okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, as of uh, June 10th, there are more than 17,000 cases confirmed and 920 people died from the COVID-19 in Japan. In Niigata, 
The first case was confirmed on February 29th, and so far, cases with no increase since May 15th. And luckily, uh, no Niigata University students or members got infected. However, uh, due to the rapid increase in the number of confirmed cases within Japan, nationwide state of emergency uh, was declared on April 16th and was completely lifted on May 25th. But in Niigata, it was lifted 11 days earlier on May, May 14th, as we did not see a big increase in number of cases. In order to prevent from getting infected with the coronavirus, Niigata University has informed all students regarding preventive measures. And you can see uh, detailed not notifications at this site here. As for the preventive measures taken at Niigata University, graduation and entrance ceremonies were canceled. We also postponed the start of classes to uh, April 20th and all classes have been conducted online. No students were allowed to conduct, uh, sorry. Uh, student entry to university building has also been restricted and no students were allowed to conduct research activities until May, uh, April 19th, and only essential activities were allowed on restricted basis from April 20th to May 17th. And because the state of emergency got lifted on May 14th in Niigata, students have been able to conduct research activities since May 18th, only if they comply with the rules and policies regarding the, the infection uh, preventive measures. Uh, the infection control measures we have been taken in general include no visit or traveling to highly affected areas until June 18th, avoid three C's, including closed space with poor ventilation, crowded places, close contact settings. Wearing a mask is very important. Frequent hand washing, disinfecting frequently touched surfaces, such as keyboards, desks, doorknobs, light switches, uh, elevator buttons, and more. Social distancing is also very important maintaining two meters or at least one meter from each other. All Niigata University members have to monitor their own health condition by taking body temperature twice a day in the morning and evening. And if there are any cold-like symptoms observed, the person needs to stay home and continue monitoring his or her health. Anyone going outside Niigata Prefecture uh, and need to stay home when returned for two weeks to monitor their health. The same applies for those coming to Niigata from other prefectures. As I mentioned earlier, students are now able to conduct research activities under certain conditions, which are specified in the university level guidelines on measures to prevent novel coronavirus infection in students' research activities. In addition to the infection control measures in the previous slide, the guidelines include reporting health condition to the supervisor before conducting uh, research activities, limiting the number of students and faculty members in the same room at the same time to less to five to five or less, minimizing the time of stay in the room or, or the lab, no field work activities outside Niigata Prefecture, and 
using non-face-to-face -face methods as, as much as possible. In addition to the university level guidelines, faculty, faculties of agriculture, engineering, science, College of Creative Studies, Graduate School of Science and Technology, and Institute of Science and Technology requires students to submit student activity consent form before participating in activities to make sure the students understand and agree to the rules and policies specified in the university level guidelines, as well as the novel coronavirus infection control measures for student research activities from those uh, faculties. Students are also required to submit the record of research activities at the end of each month in order for the university to trace student activities. Okay, uh, we also have Niigata University activity uh, restriction guidelines uh, to instruct students to take proper actions from getting infected for, uh, for preventing from getting infected with coronavirus. Red frames uh, show the current guidelines of policies. Classes or practical trainings are considered as level three. Therefore, only non-face-to-face -face classes are allowed and students have to take classes online at home in principle. No extracurricular activities are allowed and students need to refrain from non-essential and non-urgent entry to campus. As for the use of library, the service is limited. Studying and traveling abroad is prohib prohibited. And we also uh, instruct students not to travel areas with widespread infection within Japan as well. But as you may guess, uh, the activity restricting guidelines are subject to change based on the COVID-19 infection status. Due to the um, COVID-19 outbreaks in Japan, the government has suggested everyone to practice this new lifestyle. And Niigata University also strongly requested all members to adopt it. Meanwhile, uh, Niigata University has been reporting, uh, supporting student life as well. COVID-19 emergency student support desk uh, was established so that students can consult uh, their concerns with the university. There is also a student support system called Niigata University COVID-19 Emergency Student Support Package including financial and student life supports for students who need help. As for the uh, financial support, there are tuition fee exemption, COVID-19 emergency student loan, uh, study support special scholarship, and part-time jobs offered on campus are available. For the study and student life support, uh, Niigata University lends mobile Wi-Fi routers so that students can take online courses at home. Tuition payment deferral is also available. And there is a student peer support system to support other students as well. The first term finishes tomorrow on June 12th. And the second term starts on 16th, which finishes on uh, August 10th. And during the second term, uh, we will continue online courses, but we will resume on-campus experiments. But to do so, uh, all participants must take body temperature twice a day in the morning and evening. They, uh, they have to monitor their own health. Here again, if they, uh, 
if any of the cold-like symptoms are observed, the person has to stay home. I and mean, basically, uh, all participants must uh, take enough preventive pre uh, measures mentioned in the earlier slides. And they need to take notes on when and where they visited and who they met in order to, in order to be ready for the case uh, investigation and contact tracing if they get infected with the coronavirus. No inbound exchange programs until September are done due to the suspension of visa issuance mobility restrictions, border enforcement measures in Japan. Uh, currently, citizens of many countries are not allowed to enter Japan. And those who are allowed to enter, even Japanese nationals who are returning from other countries, must get the PCR test done and stay uh, at the designated places to monitor their health for two weeks. They are uh, also not allowed to use uh, public transportation during that time. With all these reasons, uh, we cannot have any inbound exchange programs. As for the outbound exchange programs, we, can, we cannot uh, have outbound exchange programs until the travel alert level of the country planning to visit issued by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan becomes one or lower. Currently, uh, travel alert level is three, avoid all travel in most countries and no country is level one or lower. If you look at this map, there's no blue one. Uh, therefore, we cannot send any students abroad at this time. All these policies uh, change according to the COVID-19 situation in Japan and the world. And Niigata University uh, president has been encouraging all students saying that never think that you are alone. We all need to take preventive measures and cooperate not to get infected and not to be the spreader of the virus. And that's how we're trying to control the COVID-19 at Niigata University. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we now really have very, very clear ideas about your um, applications at the university level. And I, I also would like to briefly uh, explain what we did and how we reacted, which I see very similar to yours. But um, for example, establishing a support desk for students is really a brilliant idea, which also some other universities maybe should consider in the future for such cases. And also even providing the students with some loans, also very good idea. And at our university level, we also try to inform the community very briefly and efficiently about the reaction against this pandemic. And also we adopted our education system. We moved to the online education mainly like you. And also we regulated the uh, working conditions of the academic staff and also the administrative staff. And also we made a, a special call for research as being one of the research universities in Turkey. Uh, it's named as uh, Science for Community COVID-19 Research Program. So uh, we can say that uh, the university reactions are quite similar. Previously, we uh, also hosted two other universities, one from Italy and one from Russia. And uh, it's like a common sense that some universities are re reacting in a very similar way. Of course, we have some special uh, solutions for specific cases, but uh, good to hear that we are on the more or less the same path. So uh, thank you very much once again. 
And now we are moving to the student side. Of course, first we will start with Assistant Professor uh, Reshat Asilolu, but then we will hear about the opinions of the students and uh, from their point of view, how was the case? So maybe we can continue now with Professor Rashid Asilolu, and then we will continue with our students. Yes, please. Thank you very much. So, uh, Professor Harada and Ms. Miyakawa sum up the situation in Japan, and I'm going to talk about how COVID-19 affected the student life with uh, three students from uh, Graduate School of Science and Technology. Just a moment, I... Okay, so basically I will uh, uh, categorize my talk under three subtitles. First, the uh, effect of COVID-19 on economic station of students. And then I will talk about how the uh, virus affected the study and research activities of students. And then finally, effect on social life. So the main problem with the students' economic station is in Japan, most of the students' main income sources part-time jobs. So this is uh, Japanese, but here you can see the percentage of students who ha has ever experienced a part-time job. So the rate is 63.7% in Japan. So it means more than half of the students depend on the income from part-time jobs. And the right figure explains the average working hours per student. So the average is 16.8 hours. So which means that students work on their part-time jobs average the 16 hours a week. So due to the COVID-19, as Harad, Professor Harada also explained, most of the shops and entertainment places is affected by COVID and they had to shut down their places. So many students were not able to continue their part-time jobs. So which caused a huge economic problem for many students. So for this case, I like to ask our students how this station affected their economic station. So let's start with Mr. Solomon. So Mr. Solomon, as far as I know, you have a part-time work. Can you explain a little bit? Uh, can you please? Yes, now can you hear me? Yes, now yes. that's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. I work part time where I basically teach English on Wednesdays and Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, but ever since the COVID 19 started, uh, it has significant, it's significantly decreased in that people were trying to take measures to stay back home and care for themselves. So as opposed to maybe if I was supposed to work like 10 hours in a week, then now I would probably work maybe two hours a week. So there's a significant decrease in that. So, um, but similar to what we do at school, there uh, they provided the means to work through Zoom. 
So some of the students don't come to take their lesson. So we just reschedule and work through Zoom. But even at that, it's still not as it used to be for everybody. So um, this basically is what has been happening. Yeah. Thank you very much for your sharing your experience. Mr. Kazusa. Mm -hmm. Our administration, I have a part time job at private school. And uh, fortunately, uh, I can keep uh, to work my job uh, because uh, my private school style is one-on-one, -on -one, so I don't uh, see a lot of uh, students and the uh, people. So, but um, yeah, in my case, I don't change the situation so much. I see. Yeah. Can you also give some information about other Japanese students in general? Uh, for example, a student who worked at the uh, izakaya kind of pub mm -hmm. and uh, unfortunately uh, in all japan uh, we can't go to the izakaya and the uh, izakaya was closed at that time last month until last month i think and that's why uh, he can't he couldn't uh, work at the uh, as a part-time job so he, mm, I don't know the detail, but he can't get the uh, salary from that part time mm -hmm. job. Okay, thank you very much. And as also I heard from uh, Professor Arda in our laboratory, so the part time workstation is highly depend on the type of the work. So most of the rest, uh, bars, zakayas, or uh, teaching jobs is limited under COVID, but so the part-time works in supermarkets and some restaurants is more getting more busier. So I think the station in Japan that so student may need to change their part-time jobs, but still they can get some part-time job and they can get salary. And also as Ms. Uh, Ms. Miyakawa told us, our university supports students financially. And also in campus, we provide part-time opportunities to students. Let me continue with the second subtitle. study and research activities. So in Japan as in Turkey as well, so most of the undergraduate students, master students and PhD students are required to submit experimental research based graduation thesis. So which means they have to, they must continue their research activities in order to complete their thesis. But because of the coronavirus spread, the students were not able to come to the laboratory for their researchers, and they lost about two or three months. Currently, we allow students to come to the laboratory, but we have restriction to five students at a given time. And the other factor is that so many students in Japan use libra libraries to study, but the libraries also were closed. And so as far as I know, currently is restricted. And this also affects the students' study sessions. And the last one is the online education. So I read an article that online education may decrease students' motivation. So in this case, I like to, again, talk, uh, ask students. So 
So first, Kazusa, uh, do you think the online education is efficient enough? Mm. Um, actually, I never uh, <laughs> take online education uh, from the university, so um, it's a difficult so, question, I think. But I said. yeah, I can say uh, our motivation yeah can be decreasing because uh, we have to turn off the video and the uh, professor can't see us, so that's mm -hmm. why we yeah, it's a bad thing, it's pretty bad things, but we don't have to stay on the in front of the laptop. So some of students I heard, <laughs> yeah, uh, don't hear uh, the course courses. So yeah, but mm, I think uh, yeah. it's not efficient for some students. That but there's a student uh, who want to run so mm -hmm. hard uh, they can mm, search on the internet rate it with the uh, course information so mm -hmm. so i think yeah it depends on person i see thank you very much you're welcome okay. miss doan please so do you currently take any online lectures or online seminars Yes, I do, and I think it was efficient for me. But however, uh, for for this class, we have to go to the field. But because of the coronaviruses, we cannot be able to. So <clears throat> that kind of thing is not good for me. But what? The, just taking online courses is, I think, is efficient for me. I see. So can you tell us any? advantage of online course courses you don't have to go to school this is <laughs> kind of good for me <laughs> but for not going to fields or um, learning something face to face is also important for me so i cannot do it this time mm -hmm. so this is the disadvantages for me i see thank you and uh, do you have any concern about so you are a PhD student. Yes, I, actually, I have. I, I the for two months I couldn't continue my research, so I am two three months behind my schedule. So, uh, thanks to my supervisor, I I'm continuing now, but uh, it's kind of stressful for me because for the reason of the coronavirus, I couldn't go outside. I couldn't continue my research. I got stressed a lot, but not uh, for not to do what to do. So <laughs> because of that, I think this was that was my concern. But now it's okay. So currently, you can continue your research. Activities. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, and, uh, Mr. Solomon. Can you? share your experience about the online education briefly. Okay, for me, I think the experience um, has the sentiment that it's based on individual. <laughs> so for me, there is what face-to-face um, -face meeting does, at least the emotions attached to facilitate learning more. But personally, I have not had any online classes besides mm -hmm. online seminars. So for seminars, interaction is quite easy, but I haven't taken an online class as of yet, so I wouldn't know much. But as regards to how it affects research, mm -hmm. we are limited by the computer and staying in the room. So I, I, for one, I'm the kind of person who would like to go to school to do my work there. So I am a bit handicapped. That's what I can see. Yeah. And uh, currently in laboratories, the number of students is restricted to five students. Yeah. So which means you have to book your experiments beforehand. Yeah. 
Does this affect your schedule or do you have any difficulties to find the uh, right Personally, schedule? It hasn't affected because every time I've had to book my schedule, it's been free for me to book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So personally, for me, it's okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Let me continue with the next slide. Social life. So uh, in Japan and is in the world. The social gathering among students is very common. And in Japan, they call it nomikai. So dinner and drinking together with students. And so during the gathering, they relieve their stresses, they exchange information, and they uh, talk about lectures, research, or talk about their daily they life problem and escort advice. So, COVID affected this kind of social activities. And also the students are outside social activities is affected. And I believe that this has some consequences on their mental health. They may get stressed easily. And also this may affect their success in university. So regarding this, I prepare two questions to students. So the first one is socialization has not been possible for the past few months. How did this station affected your personal life and emotions? Let's start with Mr. Kazusa. Can you briefly share your experiences? Mm. So uh, in my situation, uh, nowadays, we have uh, SNS or some WhatsApp or mm -hmm. in, J in Japan, we use LINE. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, it's not so hard a situation at that time because we have, uh, we have, we can take a conversation with friends or families or through that kind of SNS. So, and uh, yeah, it's not so frustrated some for me, and uh, mm, this is my way <clears throat> when I was in, uh, when I was in emergency. I see. Thank you. It's nice yeah. to hear that it didn't affect you. And uh, Toby, Mr. Solomon, can you share some experiences with us? Uh, for instance, I'm, I'm a person who is outgoing. I love to play soccer. Grand Sensei and Harder Sensei know about this. Mm -hmm. So uh, because of coronavirus, we're limited. We can't go out to play soccer because of this problem. But um, as regards keeping in touch, even with family and friends, we're able to do through Skype and WhatsApp and Facebook and all that. Yeah. So that's okay. it. Thank you very much. And uh, Ms. Toan? Mm. Mm, I also had contact with my family in Turkey and friends here with via internet or video calling. So I didn't get emotionally hurt because of that situation. And uh, how do you keep contact with your friends in Japan? In, so in Japan, uh -huh. we are live. By using or line the, or line. Mm -hmm. but yes, by using line. Okay, thank you very much. And let's continue. Actually, uh, Professor Harad already talked about impact of COVID nineteen on agriculture. So I just briefly give my uh, talk. So. Mainly the border closure, quarantines, and trade disruptions are restricted people's access to sufficient and diverse and nutritious sources of food. And in that case, so rice is the stable food in Japan and one of the mo most important food in Japan. And 
Rice is the only stable food with increasing prices. Wheat, barley didn't increase their prices, but rice is increased a little bit. And the main problem due to COVID-19 is the labor shortage and distribution of food due to the restricted transportation. And the International Labor Organization come up with four-step solution. So first is stimulating the economy and employment. And second step is supporting enterprises, jobs and incomes. Third step they suggest is protecting workers in the workplace. And the final step is relying so on social dialogue for solutions. This is the uh, how we can solve the labor problem in agriculture. But on the other hand, when we look at the statistics, the agricultural productivity seems like didn't affect it much from COVID-19 spread. And finally, the uh, future expectation and potential problems. So the main problem, as you all may agree, that the unpredictability of COVID-19 spread. So we don't know when it will end or uh, if the second wave will come or not. So this unpredictability causes stress to all of us and affects our daily life. And I think the effect of COVID-19 may continue for a longer period of time than we think. And during this time, we need to get used to the new style of life as suggested by Japanese government and I believe the government of Turkey as well. And we need to guide and help the students to overcome the difficulties they are facing. And my final message is stay positive and stay healthy. So in addition to the precautions, staying positive is an important aspect to make helpful decisions. And I like to think that this, what we are having now is an experience for all of us. So this experience offers an opportunity to better prepare to deal with other or similar crises in the future. And to, it's an opportunity to learn about crisis management. And finally, this station may lead to increasing the resilience for the future challenges. That's all. Thank you very much for listening. Dr. Asiloglu, dear friends, dear students, thank you very much uh, for sharing your opinions with us. Uh, during your presentation, uh, we had some questions in our mind. Some of them were already being answered by you, so you directly asked the students. And also, I would like to forward one student which we received through YouTube uh, to you. Uh, actually, uh, Tomoko-san explained a bit about the student loans, but one of our participants would like to learn about the uh, economical support to the students who lost their income due to the coronavirus. So maybe, uh, again, Ms. Miyakawa and also the students can answer this. What kind of supports uh, did the students receive during this? First of all, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, Japanese government uh, has decided to give about 100,000 yen to uh, all people in Japan and uh, including international students, uh, they were able to receive 100,000 yen. And that's one uh, financial support from uh, government. And at Niigata University, uh, depending on the income basis and also students' uh, condition uh, regarding the part-time jobs, uh, 
they uh, students can apply for some uh, financial support or or uh, student loan, and uh, after uh, Niigata University decides, uh, then the students may be able to receive some support from the university. And uh, uh, depending on the income, they. Hmm. All the detailed information may be found uh, on the Niigata University website. And uh, Niigata University has been informing all students about uh, financial supports and other uh, study supports to students. That's all I can answer so far. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Turgai, would you like to forward any questions to our participants? Oh, yes. Um, at first, maybe I should uh, say something about our um, previous job. So I, I would like to express my sincere thanks to all uh, friends in Niigata University for their priceless contribution to historical uh, relationships between our countries over global age, which is a long-term student exchange project established among two distinguished Japanese and three uh, deep-rooted uh, Turkish universities. And I'm very much proud to say that we activated um, totally 300 students from both sides and could touch their lives for different times of period, either here in Turkey and uh, um, or there in Japan. Actually, they are, uh, I'm very happy to see that they are with us today uh, over the YouTube and uh, Zoom. Um, luckily and happily, we managed to complete this project and reach to our goals before worldwide spread of COVID-19. Um, we staff members of Ankara and Niigata universities have always uh, encouraged our exchange students being global and resilient. And these terms were actually main perspectives of global age that we always try to inoculate um, to global age students. And it's so ironic that we, the, the whole world is now having a big examination of be global and think resilient. Of course, I'm not thankful to a deadly virus, but it is so real that no matter which country we are from, no matter what kind of job we do, or what is our uh, status in our societies, COVID-19 made all planets feel in the same way, hidden, hidden every or one behind little um, medical masks isolated all of us from our physical and social living atmospheres. And most importantly, in my opinion, COVID-19 made us realize the power and love of um, mother nature. Um, while watching, watching the presentations given by our guests today, I noticed that we have similar scientific measures or we have taken very similar precautions against the COVID-19 in our universities and countries. I'm happy to see this. And thanks to national and international uh, media resources, we have frequently uh, heard about COVID-19 agenda of many EU countries and uh, other huge countries like China and the United States uh, so far. But we uh, couldn't hear from Japan about the situation of a pandemic and early and current reactions of Japanese society um, against the virus. So in this sense, uh, today's webinar uh, was a great satisfaction for me and probably for our students. It was nice to hear from Haruda Sensei about the numbers and statistics and uh, information about uh, regulations for COVID-19 uh, official uh, regulations. And Tomoko san gave us a detailed site about the student services and regulations applied by Niigata uh, University. And I wish I would be a student of Niigata University again. Um, Toby and Kazusa and Gliz have all given very interesting sights from the eyes of students about the pressure of pandemic from educational and economic perspectives as well. And Rashid was also great and tried to make some more emphasis about agricultural uh, labor. And it was nice to hear about how people in Japan and especially in Negata reacted with the pandemic and was changed or not. Uh, um, what can I ask to our um, friends and uh, students? Um, actually, I have a different a point that our reactions to the pandemic might be different depending on which region of the world we are from.
because we have different religions, we have, we have different cultures, social, cultural diversities and environments where we live. So I was wondering what a Japanese uh, would do at home, despite all these uh, pressures and um, regulations coming outside. So what a Japanese student or Japanese a person would fight against the COVID-19 right at home? This is my a question to everyone who might give an answer, who might are willing to give an answer. Thank you. Maybe Professor Harada, would you like to say something but about this question it? Is, is open to everyone who everyone, wishes yes. to any answer, or maybe we should take a few answers from um, yes. other senses, perspective, or, and students' perspectives. Yeah. I, uh, uh, no, please do. Go ahead. Uh, no, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, from my point of view, uh, yeah. Uh, in case of Japan, uh, I'd say the uh, the characteristics of the Japanese people are very uh, uh, the one of the key points uh, against the COVID nineteen pandemic. Yeah, uh, our government uh, didn't declare lockdown, instead declare self-registrate, self-registrate without, uh, without uh, uh, the, uh, no, uh, without salary, uh, let's say, uh, help or something like that. Yeah, it's government uh, give, gave, uh, gave, gave the, uh, just ask, uh, to stay home, yeah, and uh, many of our uh, the Japanese people uh, followed the policy. Yeah, I think that that is uh, one of the differences uh, of Japanese people, uh, the mind of Japanese or behavior of Japanese people um, from the uh, the other people in the world. Rashton said, "Do you please?" Add some so I comment. agree with you. Actually, I was going to say similar things that the characteristic of Japanese people and their culture. So, for instance, they have mask culture. They use mask even if they get uh, a simple cold for a really long time, like for years. So, they have this mask culture. And I think this culture played a big role to prohibit the spread of coronavirus. And not only Japan, the, if you check the other countries with the mass culture, so the spread of coronavirus is very low, like South Korea, other countries. And so Japanese people are obeying the rules. So the rules are very important for Japanese people. So whenever I go to supermarket, so in supermarkets, we have like one or one and a half meters waiting lines. So when you are waiting for on the line. So like for the last month, I often go into supermarket, but I never see anyone who is getting closer to other people or anyone. I actually haven't seen not even single person who is not using mask when they go out. So I think this characteristic of Japanese people helped a lot to keep the low number of viruses in Japan. Okay. Thank you. Any comments from the student side? No. Okay. <laughs> I have one uh, question to my colleague Tomoko-san. Uh, how do you think it will be 
for the coming semester and coming year uh, regarding your exchange uh, collaborations with other universities. Uh, what do you expect? Do you plan to start normally or do you consider to start online, for example, exchange uh, of students in the coming year? Uh, we are actually hoping to have exchange programs, but uh, as a as a rule, you know, uh, with a, a travel alert level uh, with more than higher than level two, we cannot send any students, and we cannot accept students either. So hopefully, we can have some kind of you know online exchange programs or anything that we need to have start new style of exchange programs, I think. And uh, uh, so far at this moment, uh, because you know, most uh, citizens from other countries cannot enter Japan, uh, probably we won't be able to have exchange programs for a while. But uh, we, are, we want to have exchange programs so we will prepare uh, uh, programs to be uh, implemented. And uh, we want to start discussing about uh, having exchange programs soon, and yeah, hopefully soon. And, uh, and of course, at, at the time we have exchange programs and uh, still the level is high, our level is high, then we have to cancel that, that moment. But we want to start doing something. <laughs> Yes. I see. I think another student which we received through YouTube is also in parallel with this. Uh, one of our followers asked about the Max scholarship, if this will be able to start in September as scheduled. But uh, also, this is uh, partially answered by you. It depends on the travel restrictions, as far as I understand. Yes. Uh Actually, for the uh, next uh, scholarship in programs, we are waiting for the uh, Japanese government to give us the uh, instructions for what to do. But uh, still, we have to prepare to accept students at this moment. But we're still waiting for the, their instructions too. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, if we wait for too long and start uh, having uh, procedures, and it's going to be too late to issue a visa. So basically, uh, we was we start preparing, but at the same time we wait for the instruction from the uh, government. Yes, uh, I but we see. cannot promise right now. Yes, yes. I'd like to add um, one comment. Sure, um, please. We we don't just waiting for the comment uh, the response from the. Uh, Ministry of Education, but uh, we are uh, now to try to ask uh, our questions to the uh, next and to take an answer, to take an answer from them. So uh, I hopefully uh, we will uh, receive uh, any answers about the mixed scholarship program um, the coming the one month with one, one month. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, before we conclude, uh, I would like to ask if you have any last words, please share with us. And also our co-chair, Professor Turgai, if you'd like to add anything before we conclude, please, the floor is all yours. Uh, I think we here we uh, received uh, uh, so many valuable information uh, from our uh, Japanese uh, friends from Niigata University and also distinguished students uh, made uh, very nice explanations about the current uh, situation of uh, COVID-19 uh, in Japan. Uh, well, hopefully someone else improve a vaccine and then we will be able to answer all these questions and we will uh, get back to normal um, in coming year. Um, other than that, I have uh, nothing to say because we have uh, more or less we have uh, in the same situations uh, uh, wherever uh, we are in, in the world. And the fear is actually, the, the biggest fear is probably second or third round fight against the uh, COVID-19. Uh, 
Am I right? So we are actually expecting a such as a second or a third um, round because every everybody, every country uh, start to the normalization a process in their own um, vicinities. So probably we should wait a little bit more to, to, to have a more strong predictions about COVID-19. So thank you for your participations to this webinar. Thank you all. Uh, it, will, it, it, it was really nice to, to see you today. Um, I think we should do this maybe more often, like uh, uh, once or twice a year, if uh, COVID-19 continues in this, in this way. Thank you so much. <laughs> So, uh, if anyone adds, uh, would like to add anything, please feel free. Okay, then. So, thank you very much for your participation to our webinar. Uh, for the first time, we have such a big number of participants for our webinar. Usually, we were sharing with one or two, but uh, thank you very much for all of you. It's, for being with us today. And also our international webinar series will continue. Uh, also today we have another session uh, which you can follow also on the same uh, channel of YouTube of Ankara University. And this time we will go to United States. So uh, it's really nice to hear the different perspectives and different uh, reactions of the countries of the universities against this pandemic and I hope we can recover soon and uh, we can continue our normal collaborations as soon as possible. Once again, I would like you, uh, I would like to thank you and hope to see you soon, uh, maybe in Turkey, maybe in Japan uh, and uh, all the best for your uh, families and friends and people. Thank you very much. Until that time, uh, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye, Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you so much.